I recently <laughs> did an Imam playthrough of Cataclysm. Being a people person, I was more a. This man is a freaking genius. Hassan Bismillah. <laughs> a Jewish guy playing as an Imam. How's it going people? Jack here. So after recommendation, I am checking out today another video by Safety in Touch on a game called Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I guess this is another one of like uh, the Caves of Code type one that is uh, quite <laughs> malevolent. It sounds like, like a post-apocalyptic game by its namesake alone. But before you watch the video, please do go and subscribe and or at least like this very content here on Seth's main channel amazing dude and awesome content that he puts out there link will be in the description below with that said let us jump into the video hey hey people seth here today i'll Solid be reviewing seth. a game that's not often talked about cataclysm dark days ahead have you ever been so thirsty you drink water straight from a toilet only Ooh. to catch ass parasites and die have <sighs> you ever been so upset from getting caught in a rain that nothing could make you feel better except a soothing shot of heroin have you ever decided <laughs> to surgically and plant yourself with bionics that allow instantaneous physical teleportation only to teleport inside a concrete wall and be crushed to death. I, I didn't realize that that was what I was looking at in the thumbnail, but I digress. <laughs> All of these are distinct possibilities in Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Cataclysm Dark Days Australian Ahead is a turn-based sandbox roguelike set in modern times following a sudden apocalypse. As a grueling survival game with permadeath, Cataclysm pulls no punches oh. in creating a tense and sometimes bleak setting. Yet despite all that, it's incredibly, incredibly fucking fun. Story. The best part about the story is that no one knows exactly what happened, but okay. I'll give a simple gist of it. While future governments are busy bickering and threatening each other, the cataclysm hits. We get invaded by <laughs> extra-dimensional organisms vying for control. Wolves of Earth. Some of these are multiple species enthralled under a superior controller intelligence. Some are part of a sentient fungal hive mind that spreads its spores throughout the planet, and some are part of the most widespread oh, and no. prolific group known I've only seen this as before. the Blob. The game takes place several days after the Cataclysm. That thing is how I would imagine extraterrestrial life would uh, like attach itself to us. Because it, like you have two options, right? Why haven't we found life yet? Because either it's too far away, like we are very unique within the scope of distances that we have covered so far, although we have found a lot of exoplanets that uh, could be similar to ours, uh, that may contain life, as they have the ingredients necessary. On the other hand, it would be that uh, the life form that we have interacted with are way too advanced to even want to interact with us. But one more minor way would be that, just like in movies like Arrival, for example, they have nothing in the likeness of ours, like they're not humanoid at all. Like we're talking about gooey substances that attach themselves to us. Like if you've ever seen that th thing that he showcased before, you'll know what I'm talking about. By which point, most human life has been extinguished in major cities. The sentient blob organism yeah. infests any living creature and rapidly attaches. divides inside them until life functions fail. At which point, it will revive them it's as so a host for the blob, using the body's biomass for fuel and muscles for locomotion. Any the hosts of a blob are extremely aggressive, as their primary reproductive strategy relies on spreading the organism through open wounds. The infection is treatable, which is why blob hosts prefer to utilize mauling, deep oh. bites, cuts and claws to inoculate as much of the oh, organism zombies. as possible, yeah. preferably killing the victim in a process whose whole body will be hijacked within several hours and rise again as a fresh host. <laughs> there is only one goal in Cataclysm survive. Run. In a rare case you manage to live long enough to see winter, only then you can start developing ambitions. <laughs> Go from just surviving to controlling and dominating your environment. Find other survivors and have them join you as companions. Follow radio signals and trails that lead to some of the last bastions of humanity and help re-establish civilization. Cataclysm is designed as a survival sandbox and doesn't force you to do more than the bare necessities. Okay. The rest is up to you. Gameplay. Cataclysm's a roguelike. A complicated one at that. You'll need to utilize your entire keyboard 
to make use of all the functions given to you. There's no point explaining the controls. Just play it and play it until memorizing them is second nature to you. Download right. my copy and play random characters until you figure it all out. And don't forget to tell us how you died. Uh, most of your characters won't live long, but if it's any consolation, my first character was a literal neckbeard. I walked <laughs> barely five meters out of the evac shelter and got attacked by a wild moose, which I somehow managed to kill by flashing its skull with my Nintendo brick. <laughs> the definitive way of how to take down a Canadian. <laughs> the power of a Game Boy. It broke both of my legs so I couldn't walk, so I played Game Boy instead to avoid depression and distract from the pain. I was getting ravenously hungry, so I dragged my crippled body to a sharp rock and used it to rip out raw chunks of moose flesh and intestines, playing oh. Game Boy in between bouts of regurgitating the disgusting flesh and entrails while dying at first. Then a pack of coyotes ate me alive. <laughs> it was at this point I realized this is the game for me. Thanks, but Obama. Stick with it, and you'll find yourself dying less from stupid circumstances and more from your own stupid decisions. As briefly Great. mentioned before, you play different characters in Cataclysm. <laughs> While you can generate different worlds, these can accommodate multiple characters, oh, starting in different, unique Cyber scenarios, junkies. randomly spread throughout a world. The class and background of a character you pick will either improve or hinder your odds Joey of survival, <laughs> while their traits and quirks make for some hilarious situations. You could be flat-footed and stealthy, or brawny and resistant to disease, or you could be a psychopath that feels no remorse when most Going down undead children with your Volkswagen. Or you could be a schizophrenic, suffering uh. auditory and visual hallucinations. You can even start the game as a genetic dead end, oh, having an no. allergy to almost every type of grain, fruit, no. dairy, or processed food. I hope you enjoy bulimia, because that's a condition in this game. So is anorexia. Ooh, in many allergy. ways, Cataclysm is the quintessential teen girl simulator. Many of the I was trying to check out the 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 the, uh, the, the defects or, or the, the negative things that you can start off as, but this man had to go so far <laughs> to show this thing. <laughs> God damn it, Seth! Simulator. Many of the classes in the game range from sensible to complete meme material. You could pick anything from a police officer to a crackhead, hooker, BDSM gimp, or even a religious preacher. On that note, very few games out there actually let you play as an imam. Imams naturally start with increased diplomacy. I recently did an imam playthrough of Cataclysm. Being a people person, I was more a this man is a freaking genius. Hassan Bismillah. <laughs> a Jewish guy playing as an imam, blessed with the power of Allah, <laughs> going about to yell and berate somebody whom I can only assume has been blessed with the power of two of the apostles, Matthew St. John. Religious peace was never an option. Talker than a doer. Within days, I had shown several survivors the true path to Janna, equipping them with Kalashnikovs and gunning down every heathen on our war path to glory. This worked well <laughs> until we ran out of ammunition. Unfazed, my men continued to bash the enemy. As admirable as their courage was, we were assaulted by a zombie hulk, uh, who left my men in pieces and me splattered on the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. Where you start on the map and what challenges Shukran. you face are largely determined by the scenario. You could start as a standard survivor in an evac shelter some miles away from the nearest city, or a prisoner <laughs> trying to break out of living hell as your inmates turn on you, or a group of miners cracking through the earth to relive the events of John Carpenter's thing. The game is so jam-packed full of content that you'll never be bored. Cataclysm makes you realize that in a post-apocalyptic situation where the power grid, infrastructure, and social services have collapsed, the most valuable thing on the planet becomes books. books. Brainless yeah. who can't read will be consumed yeah. by their lack of adaptation. What they here? Okay, you, you drop your plastic bottle on the floor. You skimmed Kukina... Uh, oh, 
Italian kitchen to find out what's in it. Can bring your cooking skills to four, requires cooking level to three. It's nine crafting recipes, spaghetti bolognese, <laughs> lasagna, spaghetti, alla pesto, a pasta, a pista, and a bunga bunga. What? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Making Berlusconi jokes for a few weeks ago. It, it just came up again. While intellectual 105 IQ geniuses like myself will bloom. <laughs> Books found across the world, especially in libraries and schools, can teach you technical skills that a lay person wouldn't possess. From being able to make simple tools in the wilderness, to working and repairing cars, to complex metallurgy, and even making your own biodiesel. This goes all the way up to attempting bootleg surgery on yourself to install bionic implants to transcend your own humanity. Wow. With only a small drawback, botched surgeries will leave you spilling out your own organs and permanently disfiguring you on your deathbed. Oh Cataclysm's God. crafting system is amazing. Most recipes in the game follow a set hierarchy of ingredients, building up from raw materials and simple devices, and breaking back down to those components when disassembled in their complex form. Let okay. me give an example. If I know some simple electronics, I can assemble a flashlight with an amplifier circuit, <laughs> Not that metal, kind of flashlight. a light strip, and some copper wire. Once I've made this flashlight, I can pull it apart and break it back down to those base components. You can spend hours pouring over the absolute volumes of different crafting recipes available to you. And many recipes in the game are flexible. Don't have the optimal parts for something? That's fine. You can often substitute them for something else. Let's say I need medical supplies to disinfect wounds, but I lack rubbing alcohol. Then, any sufficiently strong spirits like vodka, brandy, or rum could be used instead. And yeah. no alcohol at all? Then you can still sterilize the gauze with concentrated honey. The system is fucking amazing. What? There's no game that comes close. Is that possible? Okay, I gotta look this up. Active diluted honey provides in a slow release hydrogen peroxide. What? The cleaning agent? That this substance serves as an effective antiseptic. Wow. I guess the, the, the bees are actually that useful, huh? To the amount of code reserved for crafting. At the beginning of a game, it's unlikely you'll find a working car. Most left behind would be trashed or broken by now. But whether through sheer luck or some <laughs> mechanical know-how, you can commandeer your own personal vehicle. Cataclysm is the best oh, turn-based driving game I've ever played in my life. It's absolutely insane how intense driving can be when you're desperately plundering buildings for resources while avoiding hordes of Mowing zombies down that bodies. want to pull your skin off. But Seth, a car is huge, why not just mow the zombies down? Sure. Yeah. You can afford to run down one or two or several, but the damage to individual car parts accumulates, and sooner ah. or later your engine will start coking, your wheels will start coming loose, and your windshield will be smashed to a pulp, leaving you either dead in the middle of an ocean <laughs> of undead closing in on you, or splattered on the pavement when your seatbelt fails and sends you flying at oh, a concrete shoot. wall. That is, until you experience experience the world of high-end car crafting. If you somehow got hold of welding equipment, you can pump up your hippie van to be a mobile death machine. Sheesh. Replace the crappy eco-friendly plating with Kevlar you scrapped off an APC. Remove a gay inline engine and replace it with a V12 sports engine. Add serrated spikes to the hood of your car and turn your current playthrough uh, into a high-velocity Mad Max Mad rampage. Max style, Survival yeah. in Cataclysm is difficult, especially at the beginning. The best part of that movie. What a lovely, what a lovely day. day! But through careful use of your own abilities and the resources at your disposal, you can make the game bend to your will. Or you'll get tired of careful living and start drinking public sewage water to malform into a hideous monstrosity. You won't miss those legs anyway. It's what? You suddenly feel dizzy and collapse to the ground. You knock to the floor. You feel insidious. You feel something straining deep inside. You're yearning to be free. Your rough skin mutation turns into a lightly fur. <laughs> Was this Seth's attempt of uh, trying to become like that? <laughs> cat boy that he has on his pillow. Especially now that you've got eight of them, and can dangle from roofs constricting survivors and enemies as a gigantic mutated octopus. Or maybe you'll come to realize your struggle is pointless and futile, and decide to join the enemy 
As a final word of caution, never wow. trust NPCs. The most dangerous creature in the Cataclysm is still other humans, and don't be surprised when someone plays innocent only to get close enough to aim a crossbow at your face and rob you blind. If I had to describe this game in one sentence, it would be single player day Z. Except fun. You can have someone call you a shithead dickhead, then immediately after, ask you to avenge their friend who got eaten in the woods by a jabberwock. The bipolarity of NPCs is hilarious and dangerous, and really adds to the experience. Also, the aforementioned jabberwock, half of the time that quest completes itself, so you don't have to do anything, as either the jabberwock gets eaten by something else, or steps on a landmine. I hope I've convinced you to try the best post-apocalyptic cotton farming and crack smoking simulator on the market. Also, it's free. So what have you got to lose? As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thank you to the many members of the ever-growing Merchants Guild for funding these videos. Okay, I, I, I think okay. like I need to uh, read to the comment sections to... Uh, kosher. Stay kosher. To check out some of these devs. Okay, so there's one here by Mappy Chan. So I downloaded the Seth's copy. By the looks of the gigantic hole in the evac shelter wall, the three Kalashnikovs and the blood and mad pack packed with mutagens around the evac shelter, Seth did prepare the ground for us. Thank you, Seth. May Allah repay you for your good deeds. Ran into a minefield, stopped, realized that I was in a minefield, then gave an exasperated sigh as a zombie child stumbled into a minefield. Did Explosion and the chain reaction vaporized both of us. Wow, there's a long one here. Okay, by Tonganto. Um, <laughs> I started the game as a martial art master, just to mess around. Picked the black belt profession, added knowledge of a few martial arts, and pumped every remaining point into my unarmed skill. Now, starting as a black belt leaves you with no items other than a kimono and some sandals, Bruh. but I just wanted to walk out of the grocery store I spawned in, started fighting some zombies, and see how long the build lasts. And what happened? How many zombies was I able to take down before finally falling myself? Literally all of them. There's a handful of zombies outside the grocery store and I start fighting them. My karate chops and kicks are so powerful that they literally knocked the zombies apart, snapping bones and tearing flesh. I'm so quick the zombies can't get hit on me. And whenever a group start to form around me, I simply back up. <laughs> This is crazy. So that only one is so close to me at any given time. As the battle goes on, the sound attracts more and more zombies from the surrounding city blocks. At first, 10 zombies lay dead on the ground, then 20, and soon the entire area is littered with the numerous zombie corpses I've decimated. Eventually, they stop coming. I've killed every single zombie in the city that was within earshot of me. Awed by my newfound power, <laughs> I realized I wasn't. <laughs> the entire run suddenly became extremely easy. Need some food? Just stopped by a gasoline station and got some from the vending machine. Sure, there are 10 zombies there and fighting them will bring another 40, but that's fine. You can kill all of them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Eventually though, I killed an acid zombies and accidentally stood in the acid bottle. It left for too long. With both my legs disabled, it quickly became impossible to outrun and fight the zombies, let alone escape the immediate situation. TLDR Kung Fu build is so P. <laughs> that was a nice one. That was a pretty good one. Wow, what a game. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna play it whenever I'm done with the other 20 that I have on my list. But awesome one and awesome review from Seth. So guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that like and or subscribe button. And of course, again, go and subscribe to Seth's in touch. If you have recommendations, leave them in the comment section below. I wish you all a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one.